Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Very, very excited to have you all here today as today we shall be making a candlestick holder. Now, a while ago I got a commission or an email asking about 10 candlestick holders and 10 lamps. Now, in this video today we shall be making one, they've asked for a sample of each, a lamp and a candlestick holder, we will be making one candlestick holder. And I have some 10 millimeter round bar, just roughly cut to a size in which I can hold on to, in the forge, ready to be heated up. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. There's a slight taper to the bar, as it's curving upwards. So what we're going to do just first off, is we're just going to create a long taper. We're going to start at the tip, work our way up. All I'm doing right now is, as I'm at the top here, I'm doing lighter strikes and as I work my way down to the edge, I start add a little, little bit more power into the strikes and that, I'm just experimenting. That hopefully, should do the trick of just adding a tape on there. If not, then I have to find some other way. <laughs> so I'm just going to use the horn of the anvil. And hopefully, help. Let's just taper down a bit. Again, we're going to try and, we'll try and refrain from taping it down too much. Cleaning off the, head, uh, the sides, then I can start taking down these edges. Get that back and forth to heat up again. Take down the edges and round it off. Almost there, what we're going to do now is just go over what we've just tapered, um, tidy it all up a little bit, and then just try and make it a nice round just like this. It should be that part done. So now we're nicely rounded off. So now we're going to start with the bending and uh, twist, uh, dab twist. A serpentine type of design. And we're going to start off by bending this tip down. We're going to take uh, uh, however much, two, three inches, bend it down a ways, and then we can start putting in the body. So we're going to go two inches. So we're going to go off the top of the horn here, just for a nice light curve, just to start off with. Top of the horn. Bend that down just like that. We know that that two inches is approximately where that bend starts. So now I'm going to get a slightly smaller tool than a horn of the anvil, and we're just going to refine that bend just so it's uh, nice and tight. Okay, just where that bend starts, just going to refine that a little bit. That angle should just about do it, and if angle up that way, then we can just start bending that round into a serpentine type shape. The ultimate finishing length of this entire piece needs to be about 30 centimeters tall. So, just and if my memory serves, 
should be right, it's right in saying that the curves, as it goes down the piece, from the top down, the curves get larger. So I'm just going to go with the flow to start off with. I reckon. The main problem is going to be trying to keep this top end straight and narrow with the rest of the piece. So I may find that I'm going to have to just shorten that curve up a little bit, which I might do in the next heat, um, and to see where we go from, from there. So it's actually going to make that curve a little bit more so. I've had a look at it and there's only two curves. That makes it a tad easier. Now I'm just going to there's only two curves and they both look equal size. So it should make a little bit easier to judge. That's how it's looking so far. And obviously if we have a straight down at the bottom, we're going to need to see how tall that is roughly, because we're going to have a flat, we're going to have a sheet steel base on it, and we're obviously going to have that little bit at the top to hold the candle. Uh, so we're going to need to account for that as well, but I'm just going to roughly see how close we can get that to 30 or so centimetres and then make up for that in the other pieces to go on later on. So now, heat up this section here and just try and replicate that same shape as first curve. Right, just need to put a little bit more of a tighter curve. Trying to get it as central as possible. Just giving it a tap, looking down the bar. Give it a tap, looking down the bar, so make sure it's nice and centred. Looks good. So now we're just going to bring this tip round by heating this section up here. Um, just so this whole thing lines up down the centre nicely. And just bring that tip round. That is pretty much dead on. There you go. That's pretty much now dead on central. Which I'm very happy with. So now what we're going to do is just let this cool off for a bit and we're going to measure how much that is giving about two three inches on the bottom there measuring how much that is close to 30 centimeters because again we've got to allow for the base and that little bit to hold the candle top so I'll let this cool off and then we'll give it a measure so this here just cool it off with some water now from the top give or take about two inches there that is about 28 centimeters so that's good possibly a little bit large that's fine because we don't have to take two inches off of here we can just maybe take one so that would leave us with about 25 centimeters throughout that just this little serpentine bit and then that will give us another five or so centimeters to work with for the base which will only be about three millimeter thick or four which should be pretty much there hopefully if not then we'll just have to take a little bit off each end maybe but um other than that i am quite 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 happy now what we're going to do is we're going to cut it off find it a nice length cut it and then we will work on the base next so that we can get this upright straight and 
Lovely. So, let's get to cutting. So I've gone with 10 inches from the tip. Use the hot cut tool. So we've got a piece of sheet steel here and we've got calipers but they're playing up a little bit so that first should be right. Sheet steel is about four mil thick and what I measured the piece before and we're about 10 millimeters just like we started off because we haven't touched this bit. 10 millimeters at this end and about seven and a half millimeters at the top here where we tapered it down. That is perfect, we're going to tape it down. So we're going to make the base out of this. We're going to cut a square out of it. Then we're going to cut the corners off the square and round it off into a nice circular base. Now they had the measurements. Um, they gave me the measurements that they wanted. So we're going to go off of those. All right, so I've had a look at the diagrams and such that the customer sent me. Um, and they don't have a specific size for the base, so. I'm thinking of going about five inches in diameter for the rounded base and that would be two and a half for the hole in the middle so we could just stick it in and then um, weld around the underneath and top side and what we're going to do the process of operation whatever you want to call it is we're going to cut a square five by five inch square we will round the whole thing off so it's a nice circle uh, sorry no we'll cut <laughs> <laughs> cut the five by five inch square then we will center punch the exact middle or as exact, as exact as we can get it then we will round everything off and then we can drill a hole um, either before or after we round it off and then we can what we're going to have is we're not just going to have a flat base we're going to have it slightly bowed hopefully just to give it a little bit more um, character so we should get to that. So we're going to have five by five inch square first and then cut it out. going to give these edges a file down to deburr everything. Right, so we're just going to measure out the centre at two and a half inches Move it that way. Middle. So to punch in the middle there. And now we'll be able to get a compass type tool, put it in there, and then we'll be able to scribe out the circle. 
Okay, we'll go with two and a half. About there. Perfect. There you have it. Should just be able to see in that sunlight there. That circle going around there. So that is going to be the shape of our base. We're going to cut off the edges. And then with a flapper disc or grinding disc, you should be able to just bring down those edges to that nice circle there. So, let's get to it. So I'm going to drill the hole first, just so I have, uh, the vice has something to hold on to with the flat, flat edges. Hoping, oh, not quite going to fit. So we've got the piece of the vice, and I have a handheld drill, which isn't turned on. So let's get to it. So that is now drilled, so hopefully yeah, that fits in nicely, nice and snug. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a, a much bigger drill bit and just countersink each side. Now that we've got the hole drilled, we're going to now round off these edges with a grinder or a flapper disc in the angle grinder, um, and then we should be able to form this base. Right, so we have the flapper disc on the angle grinder, and we're going to try and take down these corners. Let's get to it. Here's the base now, we drilled the hole, countersunk kit, we've ground down these edges and deburred them as well so it's nice and smooth. Now 
going to stick it in the forge, curl these edges over all the way around uh, to make that sort of domish shape, and then we should be able to get to welding these two pieces together. So we've got the disc heated up, and we've got this little tool in the swage block here. The idea is to hold it over. curve the edge and down a little bit. Whether it works or not is yet to be seen. Heat up again and just carry on bending that edge down. So I apologise wholeheartedly and unreservedly, but I completely forgot to film this bit. So we finished curving off that bit nicely, and we've welded it to the actual stem there, just on the bottom there, just see, and cleaned it off. Now we're going to work on the cup piece on the top here where it's going to hold the wax. And with the swage block, we're going to put the piece in a little swage there, knock it down, and hopefully we'll make a cup of shape. Set it in the swage in here. I'm going to have a rounded piece which we use to um, curl the, curve the edges on the base. And normally you would heat this up but because it's such thin metal don't really need to and it comes with a hole in it which is lovely. rounded off there. That should be able to hold wax nicely. Now we can weld this onto the top of the stem. And it's looking quite good so far. So now the next bit will be making the cup. I think it's a two centimetre diameter cup for the candle. So, let's get to it. cut out we've got it in the vice now what we're going to do is we're going to put a flapper disc on the angle grinder which is just there and we're going to grind down these burrs on the edges here so it's nice and smooth and then we can cut to the size we want turn it over to a circle and then weld it onto the candlestick holder now right, let's get to it Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is um, Editor Jacob and I just thought I would mention that between that current clip of me grinding the strip of metal down and the next clip, um, I apparently didn't film me making the candle, the actual cup for the candle, nor did I film myself welding it, welding it on, so I just thought I'd make that clear that it is made, it is welded on, um, just so no one got confused. Anyway, let's get back to it. Right, so we have the piece in the device, the wire brush. So now we're just going to give the whole thing wire brush off, clean it up a little bit, and then we'll be able to put a wax coat finish on the whole thing. And then it should be done. 
to give it a wax finish. That'll be it for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed watching me make this candlestick hold as much as I did making it. So yes, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this. Please share with your friends if you enjoyed this. I'm sure they will too. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.